Well, welcome back. I'd like to welcome everybody and thank everybody that's been faithfully watching our lessons. If you're new to the channel, don't go anywhere. Don't change that channel. Good lessons for everybody here. These are just 15 minute lessons, but there's a lot here in 15 minutes. Let's open this with a word of prayer, please. Father God, as we bow before you, I just pray, Father, that we will allow you to, to take these words that we will read, your words, and we will allow those words to penetrate into our heart. And the Father God, we will use those to grow closer to you and to teach others, Father, the truth about Jesus. In his name we pray, the name of Jesus, amen. You know, as we're getting started this morning, I think you're going to find this uh, uh, a very unique lesson. I say that sometimes, maybe all too often, but it, it's true. Every lesson is individual. They're all good lessons. The Bible was full of wonderful lessons. And, and you know, there's a lot in the Bible to learn. There are 66 books in what you and I know as the Bible. Uh, there are 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. What would you say, as you're watching this clip, if I told you, the today's lesson only consisted of five verses. And not only did it only consist of five verses, but it would be five verses in two different places. John chapter 3 and Luke chapter 15. What would you say if I told you that there is a huge lesson in just those verses and that it's scripture that you probably know very well, but yet scripture that can teach you something new? Would you be a believer in that? I hope you're curious enough to stick around. Let's find out. We're going to begin today by looking at a passage of Scripture, and it's unique. As I mentioned, 66 books in the Bible. There's a lot to learn in the Bible. Wonderful lessons all through the Scriptures from Genesis clean to Revelation. But in this passage of Scripture, is it's very unique because out of this passage was born probably, I would say, almost the, if not the, almost or if not, the most well-known Bible verse of all time, a verse you're very familiar with, and so am I. Now, we're going to read two verses in this chapter. It's a section of Scripture where there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who had come to see Jesus in the middle of the night. Not everybody knows that background, but to recognize the verse, I'm almost certain of that. Go with me to John chapter 3, and we're going to look at two verses, John 3.16 and John 3.17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You know, that verse, John 3.16, is probably the most well-known Bible verse of all time. You will almost readily recognize it, whether you're a church attender or not. Now, I have to ask you a question. I'm going to make you a challenge, and I'm sincere when I say this. As you're watching this video, what I'd like you to do next, after I ask this question, I would like you to pause the video, take a few minutes if you have to, and think about the question I ask and then restart it. That's your challenge. What I'd like to do to ask you the question is simply this. How does the truth of that verse make you feel? Pause the video at this point if you would and really think about that. That's my challenge. Did you pause the video? I hope you did, and I hope you reflected on how that verse made you feel, on what that verse means to you, to know that God did so love the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe it in him would never perish but have eternal life, that he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but yet the total opposite of that, that the world through him could be saved. How does that make you feel? I just want you to think about that in the back of your mind. I hope you did answer that challenge, excuse me, and pause this video and you answer that question for yourself. Because what comes next, and I know it's going to seem silly, it's only three verses that we're going to look at, is going to really teach you something. But before that, I have something else to ask you too. Have you ever lost something? Most of us have. And when we lose things, and we say it in different ways, we say we've misplaced things temporarily, or we just can't find it, you know, or we have all kinds of ways we say, but sometimes we do, we lose things. And losing things can, can cause different emotions. Sometimes we become angry. Sure, we know that anger is always going to be a secondary emotion, but, but sometimes it does come from the frustration or the anxiousness of not being able to find what you've lost. When we do, we get angry. Sometimes we just get frustrated. Maybe we're in a hurry, we're on our way to go somewhere, and we've temporarily misplaced. See, there we go. We don't ever like to say we lose things, but maybe we all go with you. We've temporarily misplaced our car keys, for instance. We can't find those car keys. 
Well, what emotion does it have? Sometimes you feel that anxiousness, that frustration, because you're in a hurry. You need to go. You see what I mean? There's a lot of emotions we can have when we lose things. But there's another emotion that can come too. Grief, sadness over some of the physical things that we lose. Admit it, we do that because sometimes we have sentimental connections to things, don't we? Well, there's a passage in the Bible, and, and it's going to show us a bit of a sentimental connection with a much deeper meaning. And think about that question. That I pray that you did answer the challenge and pause this video to answer. How does it make you feel when you know the impact of what John 3.16 and 17 means? I hope you answered that challenge. What we're going to do now, we're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 15, and we're going to look at verses 8, 9, and 10. And I know it's only three verses. Have you really waited for this lesson just, just for five total verses? I promise you this, you won't be disappointed because when God showed it to me, I was anything but disappointed. So let's do this. Let's take a look in Luke 15 at those verses. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner who repents. Something that I'd like to share with you that's that's something that may not be super well known about this passage. When we read this, sometimes we begin to relate to it in that physical way. We have had things that we've lost, misplaced, can't temporarily find however we word it, and later on we've been able to find. And you do feel a relief, a relief to find that which you lost. And we've all been there. We know we know what that is to have that happen. It's a, it's a good feeling. It kind of takes a weight off, especially if it was something that that was important to you. In this situation that we're reading in Scripture, if we read it and we don't study it, if we just read it and we really don't study it to see what is going on here, we could look at it as that monetary value. I get it. Okay, she had 10 coins. They were important to her because each one of those was of value, and she lost one. And when you lose one, now obviously you don't have 10 anymore. You only have nine. She's lost some money. We could be concerned about that even today. If we misplace enough money, money that we need, I'm sure we'd probably be a little bit upset about that, wouldn't we? But there's so much more here than that. In this parable that Jesus is telling, there's so much more than that because we're talking about so much more. First of all, anybody in Jesus' day would have probably got this better than you or I get this. And why I say that, there's no offense to that. It's time, place, and history where you live. In this area, in, in this time in ancient Palestine, this was something that, that would have been a little bit more than just something of monetary value. You see, when a woman would get married in that day and time, she was given, as part of her gift, these ten coins. So these ten coins not only had monetary value, they had a sentimental value as well. I would liken it, and I'm serious when I say this, ladies, can you imagine misplacing your engagement ring, or possibly losing your wedding ring. You know how that would emotionally make you feel. That's what this woman was feeling here. It was more than just monetary value she lost. She lost something that had a deep sentimental connection to her. But what did she do? Did she give up? Did she stop? Did she not look for it anymore? She did something very careful. What I'm going to do, I'm going to jump right back in here into verse 8 and read this. And we started out, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp? sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. She doesn't just forget about it. She just doesn't write it off as a loss. She's got a sentimental connection to this coin. She's bound and determined to find this coin. So what does she do? She lights that lamp and she sweeps that house until she finds it, doesn't she? You know, I have to tell you, many times in my lifetime, and I probably said it myself years ago, we remember that day. If we've had that day where we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We have that day, and a lot of us refer to it, or have in the past, or we've heard others refer to it as, wow, I remember when I found Jesus. Something that my church family is very, very familiar with is, and it's the truth of Scripture. We don't find Jesus. Jesus finds us. And what's wonderful about that is, it's exactly what this parable is relating. And if you don't believe there's those moments where Jesus seeks you out and finds you, 
then here's my challenge to you. You have to do this on your own time. I always give you these challenges, but then read Acts chapter 9. We all have that road to Damascus situation in our lives. Back to today's lesson. What's really unique about this is we learn a great truth about our God. This parable teaches us about our God. You see, keep in mind, think about it just in an earthly way. I'm going to ask you to put on your hat of the earth today, the worldly hat, and think in that way. Imagine if you lost that coin. Let's look at the reality of the coin itself. Well, first of all, you, you've lost that coin and it may be lost, but that coin still has value. You may not be able to find it right now, but that coin, wherever it's at, it still has value. It still holds its value. Whether it's lost or not, it holds its value. Okay? Secondly, you search for it because it does hold value. It's not like just because the coin becomes lost, it becomes worthless. It's still a coin of value. That's very important. I know it seems like I'm really dwelling on that point, but the whole entire lesson hinges on that very thing, and this is what I mean. What we're talking about here is so much more than just a woman who loses a coin that has sentimental value. It's how God my friends, if you're watching this clip and know this, it's how God feels about you. It's about how he feels about me. It's about how our God feels about us. You see, we made a choice long ago, and you can read about it in the book of Genesis. It's called The Fall of Man, where Adam and Eve made a choice. And in that Genesis event, chapter 3, we learn that they chose to commit the original sin, a sin that would separate us from our God enter into Jesus coming into the world, God giving his one and only Son. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever would believe in him would never perish but have eternal life, right? He didn't send him into the world to condemn the world, the opposite. He sent him here to save the world, that the world could be saved through him. That's you and that's me. It goes so much deeper than just a parable concerning a woman and a coin. You see, this woman had a deep sentimental connection to that coin. It was more than just something of monetary value, okay? It was something that, that had a deep sentimental connection. You and I have all done this. We've all probably done this, and I mean this sincerely and, and worldly speaking. We've all found some change somewhere here and there, some money here and there. It's not that we don't appreciate it, but, but why are we happy we found it? Because it had monetary value. Well, guess what? When you're God, and when you, when you live in this world, remember, remember the original sin. When you live in this world, when you're born into this world, you're born into sin. You're not born saved. Jesus finds you on that road. You have to accept that gift of grace. But you have to remember something. God was looking for you. The whole time, God was looking for you. Okay? The whole time. He never stopped. He allowed his light, just like she lit the lamp and swept the house to try to find that, he allowed his light to shine in your life, that you would be able to see him. He had already found you. He was waiting for you to accept him. Why? Because, my friends, if you're watching this clip, understand this. Because you held great value. You were lost. You were misplaced, if you want to use that word. Temporarily misplaced because of sin. Sin separates. It's that thing that comes between us and our God. Maybe you were, but you were still worth something. You were worth something very much to God. Just like when that coin was lost to that woman, it still held value. You may have been lost to God before you came to Jesus as Lord and Savior, but you still held value, sentimental value to him because he loved you like no other. Now, I know this may sound like a great, a great salvation message for someone who may be watching this and needs to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I'll grant you it is that. But what about for us who are already saved, who have already been found on that road by Jesus? It's a reminder. Don't ever forget how much your God loved you, that you were something of great value to him. You still are, and you always will be. And that's why he loved you so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe it in him would never perish. Now, I had asked you a while ago to pause, and I had asked you to reflect on what that verse meant to you. And now you understand why the title of today's clip was what the title of today's clip was. How about now? What does that verse say to you now? Remember how much God loves you. You are a person of value. Value like no other to your God. Don't ever forget that. And don't ever forget how much he loves you. We'll see you at the next one. Have a great day.